I'm Jeff, welcome back to the Shed Quarters, and in this video, we are resurrecting the Cubman. Now, the last video I did on the Cubman was like episode 47 in the build thread, and well, after that many videos, and only having 183 subscribers, I kind of got burnt out on it and decided, well, I'm going to build something else. So I did. I built a drift trike, I built an off-road buggy, I uh, built all sorts of bits and pieces, but I think 5,000 subs, it's time to resurrect the Cubman, get it going, do some donuts, and then finish the build. So, let's have a quick look at this thing, because it's an amazing little machine. More of a miniature car than a go-kart. It's got the full electrical system, it's got headlights, indicators, reverse lights. I've spent a lot of time building this. Let's pull it apart and fix it. All right, so, looks like a bit of a mess. That's because the cover panel's not in here. So basically the entire loom gets jammed in here and then there's a cover piece that goes over that, hides it all. It's painted black, looks lovely. But I've never fitted it. Cupboard's never been finished. Now, apart from that looking like a mess, this is the battery. Now, just above the battery is the steering column, and it's got about six mils of clearance. Now, unfortunately, we need to replace the battery, which means pulling out the whole steering system. That may require me to pull the engine as well, because, yeah, I, I put things where they fit, and there wasn't much room, so it is the way it is. But before we go pulling anything apart, I'm going to hook up some jumper leads and kick this thing over, see what happens. Because I have not had this thing running for a very long time. A lot of thread engagement here. It smells like petrol. Not much in there though. Got a new battery for it. It's definitely not going to fit in there at the moment. So, full size jumper leads for a half size car. Not ideal. Let's see what happens when we power on the key. Just letting it purge some of the old fuel out of the lines first before we hook it up to the carby. Hopefully that'll help us with some issues later. Alright, carby doesn't seem to be leaking. How about we hit the key and see if it fires. Been a long time since I've been in this city. fired up fairly easy. I guess we better pull it apart and get this battery changed over. Fun. Yeah, 
Okay. All right. Ta-da! Whew! Yeah, not the best design, but it's what fits. I gotta do a bunch of stuff. So, as you can see, a lot of carnage. I've got the battery out. I've got most of the loom undone. Now, this relay here is for the fuel pump, so I've just got to cut this wire and then splice in a push button. So it'll basically be push the button, it'll trigger the relay, which will run the fuel pump. Now, we want that set up because that fuel pump draws more power than the stator of the engine can produce. So basically, I can only get this thing to start three or four times before the battery's totally flat and needs to go back on the charger because no matter how long the motor is running. So, yeah. Teething issues. Now, yeah, so I will do that. Another thing I have to do is modify this fuel line and put it, find a place for the pulse pump, which will probably be up here somewhere. Let's get this thing going again. Old out, new in, and away we go. Before I go putting everything back together, there's a possibility that I can make a new mount for the battery in the back corner here. I mean, it is right next to the fuel tank and above the fuel pump, right beside the drive chain that has snapped in the past. So, it's not the best place for it, but it's easier than stripping half the vehicle to put a new one in. So, I will take the rear end off and see what we can see, see, see. Inside this side panel we've got the fuel line with return, we've got the shifter, it's not attached to a motor of course, we've got the drift brake. Now the problem with this is there's no clutch in the drive, it's just the the engine centrifugal clutch so if the engine's got any rpm at all you pull this on and it just snaps the chain in half inside this cover it's quite nice inside the other one on the other hand it's a little bit ordinary i mean the chain tensioner bit of failure so i've got a block of wood to keep the chain in the right tension not the greatest part but anyway, let's get this back cover off and see if we can fit a battery in there. When I first built this, there was, well, there was an idea that I could put the battery in here somewhere, but it meant basically mounting the battery on the side of the fuel tank. I thought that's probably not the best idea, but in order to save me pulling the entire vehicle apart again if the battery dies, I'm going to weld it to the side of the fuel tank. Which means now I need to strip the entire fuel system out of this thing. Who designed this thing? Anyway. Let's pump all that fuel back out that I put in there. Alrighty then. So. This is the fuel tank out of the Cupman. It's quite a fancy little thing. As you can see, it's got a fuel level sender that goes to the dash, because why wouldn't my go-kart have a full dashboard? So, before I took it out, I figured out exactly the where this would fit, 
and mark the side of the tank. So now I've got to make a bracket that'll wrap around the battery to be welded onto the side here, but I don't want it directly onto this. So I'm going to build a, a plate that fits in here that will get stitched on and then the bracket holding the battery will get welded onto that. So if the battery does bounce and tear the mounts to the plate that it's stuck to, it won't be tearing a hole through the side of the fuel tank. Yeah, because that's probably a good idea. So anyway, let's get some RAM board and start templating. RAM board roller. So the big roll of cardboard is out of my way. Lovely. So this piece goes on here. It gets stitch welded all around the edge. And this piece will go on about here. And he'll get stitch welded. And yeah, that should be pretty good. So let's get the TIG going. This tank has been emptied and airing out for two days so it should be fine let's see what happens <gasps> nothing all right Do the job. Alrighty, there we go. So the fuel tank fits nicely, but before we actually mount this in properly, we're going to change this rear sprocket. Now, when I first built it, I had a 73 tooth in there, and first gear was useless. So switched it over and put a 64 tooth in there, and it was pretty good off the line and well yeah worked well but I'm thinking if I switch it over to this one which is a 53 tooth which is the smallest one I can get it'll be a little bit sluggish off the line but it will have an even better top speed which we will be testing is in and fuel systems all plumb back up at this end so the next thing is the battery relocation cabling so we've got this two core of wire with black sheathing so it matches in with the rest of the loom now I've put an eyelet on each end and a large inline fuse holder about this far from the battery terminal so now I just need to find another big blade fuse for that so Next thing I need to run the wires down the side of the chassis 
and I've noticed the original wiring loom has little issue. So, right. so down, down here, here where the inner trim panel goes in, it's nicked part of the main loom. So it's only the outer sheathing at the moment. So what I'm going to do is remove the pedal, remove the rear brake master cylinder, and then these wires will be able to tuck in behind and there's a little gap up through here that they'll be able to fit in and there will be nothing that they can rub on there, hopefully. So, when I do that, I'll run this other cable through as well. When the wiring comes around through here, it'll get tied in with these wires. It'll come into the main loom. It'll have a terminal put on and that'll get hooked up straight to the main starter solenoid. So, and then that's got a wire goes into the rest of the loom. Now it does have an inline fuse here because that's where the battery was originally mounted in. That's what's going on there. Now I've put a couple of earth points on that'll get bolted in when I bolt all the relays in. It should just join them all together. I've put a little plug on here to put a momentary switch on for the fuel pump so that I can turn the pump on and off because at the moment it's hardwired to the ignition. So. When everything's back together, I'll mount this pump up here. At the moment, it's just gonna go straight on top of the fuel line and we'll see how it works. If it works fine, then I might pull the fuel line out and modify it later on, but we will just get it going for now. At which point, there'll be a momentary switch on here. I can turn the ignition on, I can press a button and the big pump in the back will pump fuel in, fill up the carby and then that's it so yeah that's the plan but that's all done now so I can actually start reassembling this we can put the motor back in we can pretty much get it running hopefully
Well, that ain't gonna work. It's all back together. I now have the, the pulse pump hooked up. So, let's see what happens. So, first thing, we turn on the key. All the dash lights up. Now this little red button on the side here, that triggers the relay to turn on the old fuel pump because it draws too much power to run constantly. So hopefully I can press this and it will prime the fuel system. If I hit the key and it starts, then the fuel system has primed properly because the carby was totally empty. It did not prime. See what happened? That all seems to work well. Awesome. Everything except for the charging system still, so. Might need to get a new rectifier for that, so that's another problem for a different time. All right, bonnet. Alright, one thing left.
I definitely need some shin guards. Oh, a better camera mount. <laughs> Downshifted, car stopped, my shins both ran into the bonnet. <laughs> oh. buddy it doesn't go anywhere there we have it all right so the number 35 go-kart chain did not enjoy that life. So, I think I'll get on the phone to Paul at CPR Card Parts. He's got some better chains for me. He's got a 420 tooth sprocket, front and rear, so it'll have a much larger chain on it. And then we can just look forward to breaking other things. But yeah. I gotta order those parts, get them on their way, and then, yeah, Cubman video coming up. This thing looks pretty sick. Like the racing stripes? Awesome! Back to the shed quarters, and as always, customize everything. Whew.